Hey everyone, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and tonight I'm so excited for this particular art lesson. I'm going to show you how you can create very easily through a step by step process this colorful fall tree forest, it's like a tree tunnel. And it's done as a tribute painting to the great Afromov, who's this amazing expressionist painter. He's just known for his color and his thick paint. And I'm going to show you those techniques and how you can make this painting for yourself at home today. I want to say hi to everybody I saw kind of early up before the show in the live chat. There was a lot of first time viewers. So if you're here for the first time, I want to say hi. If you come in, you come all the time. If you're one of our Sherpets or Sherpazoids, I also want to give you a big art hug and say thank you for coming in this evening. I love this new day and time. On the mic, as many of you know, is my husband, John, Hello. also known as Stunt Hands, and mostly because we just see his name. Yep. <laughs> Hello. He's a little camera shy. I don't like the camera. He does not, but he will talk to you on the microphone. I will talk. <laughs> so what he's going to do is he's going to track me with one of our robotic cameras, and he zooms in, he gets in on the paint action. If you've got a question, he tries to get in on a better angle. If you are here on the live and you do have a question, you might get it answered on the show. And to do that, be sure and put your question in all capital letters. It's not shouting if it's during a live. And even if we don't get to it this class, either the moderators will be able to show you to a link that does answer your question, or maybe I'll answer it after in the comments. You never know. I'm ready to just jump on in. Are you ready, John? Are you? I'm ready. Let's paint this easy painting. Let's go. All right. Let's go. All right. I'm going to turn it. Whoop. There You're it is. to do the, the thing in the this, thing. There's that skip one. Skip a step. This one? Yeah, that's that. Okay, so. This here, I really love this. If you'll notice this, I'm sure John can get really up on this. Man. Very thick implied paint. And in art, if you're brand new to painting, there's a really fun art word for this. It's called impasto. Oh. So all day today, we're going to be saying impasto. It has no carbs. Impasto. Huh. <laughs> this is an 8 by 10 artboard. And to duplicate it, I'm going to take a blank artboard. I'm going to put it here. I get these at uh, Michael's in canvas packs. They're economical. They come in big packs. They're great for storage. Stretch canvas, uh, paper for painting, all of it. It's all good. We like to put wishes on our surfaces. So our first wish is healing and love to surround Bob and bring him back whole and, and okay to his loved ones. Uh, love and peace to Aframa's family and all his friends and family because it's just tremendous to lose somebody that you care about. Um, we're wishing that uh, Tori has a really, really effective surgery. She has fast healing and tons of support, love, healing friends and family around her. Uh, healing for Charlotte's eyes. She would just really like her eye to just like be cool. And I'm ready to get into the material. I'm going to look at what we're using today. Yeah. All right. So in this, I'm going to tell you what we are using, give you some ideas of paints you could easily exchange. I want you to think about this particular piece is being very flexible on color. So I'll tell you what I've got, but if you have to make little adjustments, it's not going to damage the result of the piece. I have titanium white heavy body paint, dioxazine purple, or sometimes it's referred to as diox purple because nobody likes to write the whole thing out. Thalo green, thalo blue. These can be referred to sometimes as thaloithecane, but it's another one of those nobody likes to write the whole thing out or say it, so even the paint companies call them thalo now. Cadmium red light. You could use a naphthol red light with that, and it would be perfectly okay. Or you could use a bright orange. It would also be all right. I have cadmium red. That would work very well with naphthol red. I have cadmium yellow. You could use Hansa yellow or nickel ozo yellow. I have burnt sienna. That's pretty much the color that's in everybody's paint kit. So you should generally have that around. I have carbon black, but Mars black is just fine. I was thinking we might use yellow ochre, but I have a suspicion we're not going to need it in this piece. So I'm going to put it aside. The brushes we're going to be getting in today is a nice big wide brush to paint a background in or a ground. I've got a cat's tongue, but you could just as easily use a round. This is a number four cat's tongue. And this is a number four round. Either one of these would be fine. Now, for fun, instead of using an artist knife, we're going to be using my cloud brushes. And I've got the number eight, number six, and number four. It comes in a pack. But look, if you don't have the cloud brushes, you can use a palette knife or you can just use a stiff brush. 
little inside tip if you're new to painting there is always a multitude of ways to accomplish a technique so if in the chat you're like hey i don't have that but i really want to do it and you shout it out i am sure about 50 people here will be enthused to help you and answer that question so you know what else you can use because those who have painted with me for a while they know and then of course to sign the painting i have a monogram liner but that's all i'm going to be using that for now to start this out you guys are going to love this we're going to start out with three colors boom 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 we're going to use a little phthalo blue and a little phthalo uh phthalo green right next to each other and there's a reason why they can be right next to each other and then i'm going to put out white and we're going to do something called a ground a ground is something that really creates a forgiving surface for new painters. So the reason I'm having you do this is if you're really new to painting and you're unfamiliar with the techniques, the ground is going to come in and kind of create a safety net for you to really help you do this. Because believe you me, this is actually an easier painting than you might think. So this is called an artist knife. And I'm going to mix this together using that. Now you could use your brush. I do this all the time when I'm feeling like, oh, I just don't want to get my artist knife out. I just do it with my brush. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I'm just incorporating these two paints together because I don't want to pull out a whole third paint for Thalo Turquoise. And of course, what was the one thing I'm missing, John? Guess, guess, guess. Mm. Towel? <laughs> <laughs> towel, really? I can get you out As of per the always. Shh, I have towel. You have towel? Yeah. Okay. So um, it can be really useful to have a towel when you're painting. Um, it helps me remove excess water. It helps me uh, get paint off. I don't throw it. If you throw it at me, I'm not going to catch it. And I'm going to I'm going to fall down and then they're going to call the cops on you. And then that spider will come back and it'll be a whole thing. We have no history here. Okay. So I don't know where I was going. Anyways, it's really going to help you. To do this, I'm going to get a little bit of the blue onto my brush. You can see I'm actually not grabbing that much, am I? Just a little bit. And then I'm going to come and get quite a lot of the white. You may need to, if you're painting heavy body paint like me, add a bit more water. If you're painting a student paint like Liquitex Basics, I want you to use less water than me. Mm. Right? The amount of water I use is appropriate for professional paint, but it's a little excessive for beginner paint. Beginner paints have less pigment. Uh, in general, not as strong or fortified as a polymer. The ingredients are sort of where they uh, save the money to reduce the cost. And uh, that means that your little tip there, your little trick there, is maybe you use two coats where I use one and you use a little less water. And that's all it is. You don't got to run out. I mean, it's fun to run out and buy all new paint. <laughs> but you don't need to at all. See, that's an acrylic ground. You learned a thing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Already you're like, I know what an acrylic ground is. Now, to do the next part, I really need to dry this because I'm going to be kind of mapping some things out and I don't want to get it all over my hand. John's going to talk to you real quick. I am. And I'll be right back. Okay. So, while she's doing that, I'll remind you guys, don't use heat. There's all sorts of reasons why not to use heat, but mostly because uh, paint doesn't like it. That's a really good reason. Paint doesn't like heat. It's uh, temperature sensitive to some degree, especially when using hot air. It doesn't like that. It can do things like color shift and uh, you know cause problems. So don't use heat. Just use air. That helps speed the curing process. And that's it. That's it. That's all I have to we say. We did it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is show you where to put your horizon line. That's the furthest little landscape line that we'll see in a painting. It's really important to get it in. So we're going to do that. And it's just five and a quarter inches or 13 centimeters down from the top. And to get that in, I like to use something called, this is measuring tool here is called a T-square. They're not expensive, but you could also just use any straight edged anything that you have. I mean, I have used printer paper yeah. to get a straight edge. So don't feel like you got to, you know, get a thing here. Now, for the opening, I'm going to come here and I'm going to like give myself like four inches over. I'm going to come back over four inches. Yeah, I was right. It's too open. 
So it's sort of too open here. So right here, that's going to be where my road starts to come, right? And one side of my road is going to come right here to the corner, right? And the other side of my road is going to be just a little bit in from the corner. And that tells us a little something about where our viewer standing is like not being totally a perfect one point perspective, but it's darn close. Now, from here, are you ready to do from here? I'm ready. Are you ready? We're going to get our big, big, big uh, number eight out. And I'm going to start by putting out uh, my doxazine purple, my dox purple. You guys remember that from earlier? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that here. That's actually how I'm going to darken some of the color. Instead of just using black, it's super fun. And I will go ahead and add a little bit of white to this right here so I can kind of really get into it thickly. And I'll go ahead and put a little blue into my purple. And I'm going to get into that thickly. These are thick coats that we're going to do. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to do this very distant very distant bush line. See how we're doing? Yeah. This is far away. It's going to come up here. And we're going to take this all the way to the top, and you're just going to make these thick, loose brush strokes. I'm an inch over from the edge here and moving in. I'm going to bring this down at an angle. What I'm trying to do is cover the background. Having what you're going to notice is I can even go into our thick turquoise to make a dark color. See how we do? It's kind of fun. I like to mix it up. These little mix up of blues is really fun. See how we're just making thick pressed brush strokes. You can do this with other types of brushes. When we get into the trees, we're going to get thick, thick like that. Right now, we're kind of brushing back and forth. We're getting texture, but we're not laying it on so thickly yet. But we will. Won't you love that? All right. That's a nice little bit going on here. And I'll take this up to the top. That's pretty good. I'm going to come over here. And I'm just using that turquoise that I mixed. Doesn't that make a nice dark color? It really does. Pretty easy to get this dark color, and it's a very similar little run of marks that are going to come back here. Now, this uh, Kathleen, that's a good a good question. I Ask love your process. good question, Kathleen. How do you decide what color to paint your ground? So, how I do it is I look at a particular type of color theory where I have a strong focal story, like all these warm reds, and then I look on the color wheel to see what its contrast is. And then I use that as a pop of color, and then it's split uh, to create little pops. And I have a wheel that I really, really like that helps me do that. See this wheel? Actually tells me what my discords are and what my main color is. And this whole piece is based off of this palette right here. Ah. And a very boring photograph. <laughs> the photograph itself was actually not that compelling in any way boring not great lighting i'm using a darker color right here at the corner but you can take a boring photograph if it has good composition and using color create something really dramatic yeah i just get into that thick and even if something peeks through what peeks through well that beautiful turquoise and who doesn't love that beautiful turquoise now when i get here some interesting things are going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and put out a little of my burnt sienna. I'm going to go ahead and put out a little more of my phthalo blue because I'm just really heavily into my turquoise now. I'm going to put out my phthalo green. Such a great color. And my cad yellow. And that's a lot of fun. I'm going to take my artist knife, cleaned, mm -hmm. 
and bring just a smidge of that green over to this yellow. And next time just you a pull, smidge. Next time you pull them out. Uh, Which thing? The Can you show what a cloud brush is? Oh, uh, yes, I'd be happy to. So, again, don't have to have this one, but what this is, is a dome scumbler. It's very stiff. I use it to make like stratus clouds and really nice hard edges on round fluffy clouds. Um, it's really nice synthetic filament. You can almost hear the stiffness of that. So I can use it the way you would use a palette knife. Now this is my light green. I'm gonna go ahead and in planning, guess what we're gonna put out? Huh. A little more white right here. Now, I have a very small cloud brush. If you don't have a small cloud brush, at this juncture, you could use a round brush like this. I'm going to take some of my burnt sienna and my blue together. And see, I don't even have to mix it with a palette knife every time. And this is going to make my very dark kind of background color. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to apply these little trees. Messy, silly little trees with these dark colors. I'm just going to come up here. Maybe a little dark one that comes over. See that towards the left, leaning towards the left. You could have another one right here. These are distant little fellows. And they're just going to be far away. All right, you can put the paint out quite thick if you want. Good stuff. And guess what you get to do? Hmm. You're going to take some of your blue and a lot of your white and come right here in the center between these trees. Painting this very roughly in. Do you see how I just sort of filled it in? Yeah. Do that again. See how I load that up? Got a little bit of blue in it, which is nice. I'm gonna come right here and paint around the trunks with this blue sky implication. So this is a fun little one because it's small, it gives you some control. And what you want here is a very light value. That means you'll have a lot of white in the paint and not a lot of blue. It won't be pure white, but that's how you're going to do the impasto expressive version of distant, far away, misty colors. Now I'm going to rinse that out. I'm going to get back into my big brush. So I get to do some fun things. Now up right. here, I get to fill in. I get to take a bunch of my green and even some of my brown. Green and brown. And I'm going to begin to lay this dark color down here. This is the outer edge of these trees. Outer edge, green and brown. You can pull some of these colors back in because on a painting where we paint thick like this, each color layers and peeks in with each other. Look at how that paint is on there. See, I can go quite thick. Yeah. I do want it to be distinctly green so that my brown trees show. And I'm only going to come to right when that blue started. And I'm going to also fill this in up through here, right to here. Not quite the middle point, but over about an inch. If you're painting with me, if you're new to painting, your big thing is going to be, I want you to look at making a stroke and maybe making strokes different directions, right? Also notice how I'm turning my brush. So I'm changing directions, turning my brush that offloads paint. And I go back into this color that I had before. Maybe I get some green and blue and brown this time. It really doesn't matter. It's all just fine. All right, so we're up here. This is going to help our reds really pop later on. I'm going to rinse out a bit. And I'm going to start getting a little of this green. And my yellow together, that green yellow that I made. This is a brighter color, right? Now things are going to get a little thicker. 
a little more impasto. We're putting color next to color. This reminds us a little bit maybe of the pointillist painters, doesn't it? Impressionist mm -hmm. painters. The idea that color next to color, right? We'll go back in and we'll put a couple colors mixed in. See how it mixes on the canvas? Right, from there, a little bit. You can bring a pop back there. You can't get it wrong. Well, because it's art. So who's to tell you, right? They don't have a right to come in and tell you, you wrong. Now notice I'm just making a mark. There are rubber palette knives that you can do this with quite easily as well. A lot of people are super fond of. Just filling in these little trees that are going to be coming in here and filling in. As we come towards the center, guess what happens to the color? It gets lighter because more light is going to get into it. Hmm. Come right across the top here, and I can bring this back. Yeah, I brought it back in. And when I want to kind of get some of that dark color off, I don't really even necessarily rinse every time. I might just wipe off on my brush. So thick. Thick, thick, thick. Notice I'm loading up super thick. I keep thinking of um, the song from Madagascar. I think it was two or three where the hippo liked the other hippo. It was before the giraffe had confessed his love. <laughs> the same. This reminds me of that whenever oh, I go thick, yeah. thick, thick. <laughs> Whole painting. So I can put some darker greens here. Look how we pop those in. Don't those just vibrate when they come in? Look at that in there. There aren't difficult brush strokes in this painting, but there is some challenging emotional journeys. <laughs> because when you're very new to painting, it's hard to feel good about your dab of paint. Mm. You assume that because you're doing it, your dab of paint must be wrong and you give me the credit as the teacher that my dab of paint must be right but chances are you're doing just fine you're just unfamiliar with how you want to dab your paint what i am doing is i'm trying to leave uh, little bits of blue peeking through and if we lose any of our little bits of blue guess what we get to do hmm. put it back I'm rinsing a little bit, and the reason I'm rinsing is I want to control how light the next paint is. Now I'm going to take the yellow-green mixture, and I'm going to come over to my white, and I'm going to pull these together. See that's loosely mixed? And we're going to just right on top. Look, we just put it right on top. So this is so thick, right? It's the white and the green. It creates that next layer of light. And get some of that yellow green. I love doing this. And some white and yellow green. Making some of these light colors even lighter. So it's not white, it's just very light and bright. I can roll off and just mix some more in there. Just them little trees with their little lights. That's fine. Now, before I start to put in my trees or do any of that, I've got to get some background in. And I like to start with this yellow green I have. If I don't have enough of the yellow green, I may put out a little more yellow. I'm going to mix the yellow green mix that I had before into more of my yellow and I'm going to come right here along this and I'm just going to scrape back and forth. You see how I'm doing? I do. And you can be very uneven along this edge if you'd like to be. Start to come into that space. Just back and forth. It can be a little more green if it needs to be. A little more green. See, we made a little distant more green. Yeah. Just come back here. Don't worry about it too much.
If I have trouble getting to a space on my canvas, I try to turn it. And I'm following that line. I know I'll make changes to this space. The other thing you're going to notice is if you have thin paint, the blue shows through, and that's going to look better than just white canvas. Now I'm going to do a similar thing to the other side. But this time, maybe that green is a little bit darker over here on this side. If you get little pops of color like that, don't fight it. <laughs> Good. Good. Because you're trying to paint with a spirit of Impressionism, right? And that's just about capturing a moment, a space. You'll notice that I don't make a straight line back. What do I do? I have some uneven lines, don't I? This one comes out and starts to go back in and then out. It's zigzag. You can do that. You can zigzag a thing. Yeah. And look, you can even get like that. Isn't that fun? I haven't even pulled a palette knife out yet. So cool. I could, but I haven't had to, do, had to do that at all in any way. Now, once I have that in, I'm going to do an interesting thing here. I am going to dry it because I need what's happening next to relate to the layer underneath it. When you're painting with acrylic or oils, Knowing when something has to be dry and when it has to be wet is critical. And that's one of the reasons that you want a teacher is just someone to say, now, now it needs to be dry or no, keep it wet. Because those are the moments that make or break a paint. So right now we want it to be a little bit more dry. So, yep. So you just want to make sure that stays dry so you don't pick up any of the under paint, under colors as you lay those colors down. You know, just to... Uh, that's the thing about layers. Either you want them to mix or you don't. Oh, gee. That's, uh, that's taking a little longer than I was expecting. But, you know, I didn't prepare my normal, like, don't use anything. You already got that today. So, oh, check the link in the description down below because we have stuff. There's reference materials and information and all that kind of good stuff. All the information about all the cool stuff we have going on. You can find out in the link in the description down below. Yes. So, other than that, I will look over here and say, wow, there's a lot of you guys out here. Thank you for joining us tonight. Super nice to see you. Love seeing you guys. Uh, there's a couple questions coming up here that I will take note of. So, yes, there's a total, she has a whole, whole theory around her colors. What I do? You do? Yes, I do. So why do you put down these darker green colors if you're just going to cover them up anyway? Well, these are going to pop through the reds. They're going to be like distant leaves. If you've ever been in a forest, when you look through it, there's never just a monotone set of red or green. There are distant colors. There's shades. There's values. As things get further away, they soften. So even if you're painting in this manner, you've got to remember those things. And it will give whatever you're doing artistically a more uh, cohesive whole and give your heart more joy. And who doesn't want more joy in their heart? I feel like they do. Yeah. So that's why we do. We, and even when you see it covered up, the bit where a little bit of yeah. tad red shows against this blue, it's like joy. Now, understand a couple of things. It's very unlikely that your paint is truly dry. If you're painting very thick, it can take a long time for paint to dry. So what you have is called a skin, which means what's underneath it is still essentially wet. So for this next part, you are going to want to have a softer touch. I'm going to take my brown here and this grip I'm going to add some black to. Not pure black. I want the brown in it. Right? I want it to be like this. And then I'm going to wipe that off. Is always fun for me. I'm going to make some orange and I'm going to use my cad red light and some cad yellow to make a nice orange. About half of that. You do so much thick painting, don't worry. It feels like you use a lot of paint and in some sense you do, but you have very little waste because things just get layered and layered on your subject. And then I'll go ahead and treat myself. Uh, tr treat yourself. So those of you that are Park and Recreation fans, <laughs> to a little more burnt sienna. 
It's so good, right? Let's put in our trees. Now, a couple of things about these trees are very beginner friendly, but the most important thing about the trees that is beginner friendly, if you would like to guess, no branches. <laughs> oh yeah. Honestly, that's the most, I've got a fully branch packed lesson coming up. If you're like, I need to do a tree tunnel and I need all the branches and I need that tunnel from Game of Thrones, but you're gonna make it look like Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I got that coming up and we will cover all the branches. But this is really nice if you're new to painting because branches can kind of be a pain. It can be. Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm. But not always. And so you know what I'm into, it's just kombucha. Which is a fermented tea. But not, not fermented in that way, it's a health food. Good. It is good. It's Mine's watermelon drink. flavored. It's a living tea. It's wonderful. It's a living tea. Tonight is a healthy sippy sippy. So that I sleep well. Now, we have trees here, and a couple of things I want you to notice is to get the perspective of these trees, a few things happen. They are shorter in the distance, right? And they get taller as they come closer. So like this tree, right, is about the, the height of this tree right there. So if I were to come here, I'm going to use my small, actually, I'm going to use my cat's trunk. I'm going to put the first thing in with a cat's trunk. I'm going to load up, and you could use the round here. I'm going to get a little black and I'm going to make a tree that comes over, oh gosh, about an inch over here. And it's going to come up. Doesn't need to be super straight in any way. Nice little distant tree. And he'll have a little friend over here. That loose. It can be hard to believe that you get to be that loose with it, but you do. Now, coming on a diagonal line back, I'm going to make a slightly taller tree. And it will also be a little thicker than his friend. And come back again on the diagonal. Now, you don't have to paint them in like a really overly intense row. It's just a nice, if you're doing lamps it, or fence, yes, it has to be completely specific. But with trees, they kind of have a little bit of give. Yeah. Make that a little bit thicker. This is just the beginning. And that first line with the brush that can help me uh, before I get everything loose, you can take these up a little, a little like tempered if you want. That's okay. And then we're going to have here, Mike. Mike. Yeah? Yeah. It's caught in my hair and falls out these days. Did it? I'm sorry. Yes. All right. So. And come back here. We're going to make another little tree. See me taller. And his friend. There we go. The tr you do want your trees to be thicker at the base and more tapered at the top. So there you go. This one I'm going to let him be uh, uh, not quite as straight as his friends. He's not going to be such a straight arrow. <laughs> He'll have a little bit of a lean to him. Just a smidge. Interesting. He's got a bit of a lean. There we go. That's fine. And we're going to do a similar little thing. This guy is going to come forward a bit, and he will be quite tall. And we're making him a little bit taller. Yeah. And then we've got these two friends here that sort of bisect and separate. What goes on with this now? Got to figure out what it is. I will work on that. I don't know, babe. <gasps> That's okay. So I'm going to come here. And come up. And then this guy will have a little friend that goes almost off the canvas. Because trees sometimes do that, don't they? Yeah. And you can paint these brush strokes with very thick paint. You don't just have to paint, you know, thickly with a palette knife. You can paint thickly with other tools. So these are going to have a bit of a dry. And we have to get a bunch of other color kind of coming in. So let's start filling in. I'm going to get my 
big cat's tongue. And I'm going to start filling in some other fun colors. So I'm going to grab some green here and some of my kind of yellow green. It's a darker mix, right? And we're going to start coming in here. Maybe pulling in some green in the distance, right? Yeah. Filling it in. Tapping out those colors. If you need to come back with some blue, you can always just grab some right there on your brush. And look, you just bring it back in. There we go. Bringing that back in. And it starts to define those trunks a bit, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Bring that blue up. If I feels like it, I can come here and continue to work this edge here. Fun little brush. Maybe get a little purple. Maybe a little white into this. Oh, that was fun. I get too much color on there. I can always come back. A little green and yellow. Come back towards this far away tree. Look at that. We can just do what we need to do. Now, around these little trunks are super fun because they will have. Yeah, I press down and go out. These are like the shadows under the trees. Just work those underneath. If you need a little green and brown, grab a little green and brown, deepen those shadows. Pop some right there. Green and brown. Your new cloud brush could be so much fun, right? Yeah. Come uh, here and do similar I think it's really stuff. good. Similar stuff, babe. And every time you do this, you can get more colorful. You can be more playful. Again, a little shadow under the tree. But this one has a little bit more light to it, so I might come and grab a little bit of my green and yellow and some white. Look at that. Mm and lighten up this distant, far away space. Come get some white and the blue. You can get the phthalo, the green, the turquoise into it, which is real fun. I'll come right here. And see how I just kind of wiggle that out and it leaves that crazy multicolor paint? What, how easy is that? Maybe a little more of the green and yellow. Grab some of that brown there. Make a like a messy mix here. You got lots of other colors that are going to be coming in. We build up and we build up. I'm going to grab a bunch of that. Maybe come right across here. Bright yellow. The trick to this, guys, is playing. Put a little bit of the green and yellow right here. Playing. This is playing. If you're holding your breath, I want you to breathe in and breathe out right now. You know some of you are. Holding your breath natural thing everybody does it it's good to remember to watch out for it uh, come into this wet paint and it blends on the canvas and pulls through 
we're going to play against that joy the whole time. Yeah. Our whole time. And as we put colors up here, colors are going to start to come down here. Now, a fun color combo that we can do is we've got some quinacridone magenta. All right. Very common color that Afromov used to use in his paintings and tuck in. And I didn't want to do something without that sort of element there. So I'm going to take a little of my Doc's purple and a little of my quinacridone magenta. Grab some of your white wherever it's hiding. Let's tuck in a surprising pop of that over here on this side. Look at that gorgeous color. I'm going to come right here. I think the most interesting thing about what I do is like I'll do a very expressive painting and then I've got to come back and paint it expressively again. Hmm. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's see if I can get all those little plops of paint in similar places. Isn't that nice? Yeah. It just comes out. It just starts to happen. Now, I'm going to take my cad red and a little bit of my doxazine purple. Not a lot, guys. A little bit. And I'll mix them together. I could have done an alizarin crimson, but sometimes it's nice to limit the palette of a painting, right? This is sort of a dark red, isn't it? Yeah. we go. Now I'm going to take some of that dark, dark color. I'm again tapping out deeper values in my little trees. A bit. Just a bit because I still have trunks and stuff to do. We're just starting to think about it. Yeah, we're just putting down thick paint. Mm -hmm. Pick it up thick. What do we do? Put it down thick. Little dabs. Put it down thick. Whether you're doing this with a palette knife, a round stiff brush, whatever it is, the trick is going to be layering large, thick swags of paint. Like I might come down here. Thick. Come over here to the right hand side. Let me put some there. I use this brush very much in the way I would use a knife, but this lets me not have to go through all that knife stuff. Thick, thick layers of paint. Just, you can take everything off your palette. And put it on there. Mm. Now, the tree's real fast. So I've got a little black here, and I'll just come back through and reinforce this roughed out bit that I did with my uh, tidy brush. It can be hard. You can do this with just the cloud brush, guys, but if you're not familiar with doing it with just a palette knife, or just a cloud brush, or just, you know, whatever tool you're using, strip of cardboard, all these things will literally work. Loyalty discount card. <laughs> no, seriously. Never underestimate the power of a loyalty discount card as a painting tool. That's true. I've seen you use it. Credit cards. So when you have that sort of on there in that nice thick way, I'm going to come in and add a little bit of my burnt sienna, but I'm going to do something important. I'm going to put some of my orange into it. When I come along the trunk,
And if you have to switch down to your smaller size, it's okay to do so. So I'm going to switch down to my four. See how we're capturing a highlight there? Yeah. Nice to see these two seasons side by side. Hmm. Interesting. Right now, they look like two different seasons. Yes, it does have a bit of that. But there is a magical moment, isn't there? When some of the trees are still very green, or some of the yellow trees start to kind of go through this uh, transformation before they get to yellow, where they were green like an aspen. Mm -hmm. And then they're getting into the yellow. So you just never know. Now, if you were going to work a little larger, I would size up my brushes. <laughs> yeah. Or you get into big palette knives. Uh, the rubber ones um, can be really nice for something like this. But you can do this with my plastic palette knives too. You just size up. Just don't try to do, do a big giant painting with a teeny tiny brush. Mm, that makes sense. Be like Genie and Aladdin. All the power in the universe and in any bitty living space. That's exactly what it is to be painting with a small brush. You're like a genie in a lamp. <laughs> but just go ahead and, you know, you highlight these. And the orange pops up a very specific kind of highlight. that You kind of can work in. And look how that creates a bark effect, doesn't it? So what I'm doing here is I just go and I just move the brush up. But you know what else I can do? I roll. I don't know if the camera's catching that, which is why I'm narrating it. Yeah, I'm going to do it did. right here. No one's going to try to follow me, and I'm going to roll up the, the, the tree and kind of make some bark. So I come here, and I'm lightly touching it, and I'm catching the top, and then if I, if I roll the brush, look what happens. Yeah. Good stuff. You can always get a little bit of yellow into this, and that's where I thought I might have used the ochre, but... You can see that there really isn't a need with the yellow being there. It doesn't need to be everywhere. It's just a couple places, and it's like you caught a little sunlight. Fun times. If you lose any of your black, what do you do? You just go back with it. You've got it right here. So where can you go? You can go right there, can't you? And rework out your tree in any way that you need to. You can pull it down into the ground. Look at that. I love these little things. All right, back to the big brushes. Let's start swogging on color. It's super fun. So more of my cad red. I'm going to go ahead and just loosely mix Doc's purple and cad red together. Bring some of that color down here. Now, sometimes what I do is I tuck it neatly around the tree. I paint around my tree. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Little dock, little cat, mixing it on the canvas. So you can see how thoroughly mixed is different than loosely mixed. And this dark color is going to come out. All through here. I may not go too deep with all of it into that green. Because as I get to the center area, what's happening on my trees? They're going to get lighter. And you can see now little bits of the blue and stuff peek through those reds. And it is a delight to your human eye. I'm going to come make a few marks across. Because colors should 
be incorporated throughout the painting. Can you believe how fun this is? Why well, I, I couldn't. I love it. I love I watching like, this. We need more brush projects. Because sometimes we forget that our tools do a lot of different stuff and we get very linear, don't we? We get linear about this brush makes this stroke. This tool does this thing. But when you're around artists that paint all the time, you're going to see them use tools in ways that are not ascribed by their inventor. Mm. And as long as it's safe in your studio to do so, I highly recommend it. Paint with both sides of the brush. You know, paint with everything. Um, tape all your brushes together and make a long stick. <laughs> stick brush. Stick brush. Monet did it. He wanted to get back from his canvas and see things, so he made him a stick brush. What am I doing with these dark reds? This, these deep values. What do these deep values recommend, re, uh, well, represent? On my best day, I have no idea. The deep shadows of the trees. We don't have to, you know, tell those stories in a boring, boring way. It can be interesting. But I still wanna. Be boring and boring, boring with the shadow stories? Clearly. <laughs> Already I'm liking it. <laughs> Just the layers. Ogres and onions and paintings have layers. And you have layers too. Look for spots. I'm right here. So can you see this sort of shape? I've left it open here. Some of it goes in here. I want these dark values to peek through because it's going to help weave. Now it's a good time to rinse out. I want to make sure that I've got some tonality back there that I like. So I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and my white loosely mixed but still pretty dark. Yeah, we're done? Yeah. So we're letting that purple go through. We don't want to like lose that. And go back into my aqua if I need to. Or you can even come up into there. You are not trapped by any of your decisions. So going forward, the next interesting color we can get into is just the really great red. Now sometimes it's nice to mix this red into my quinacridone. You guys know I love this so much. And I'm going to just put it out in big thick plops. And it is going to glow against the background. Can you guys see the glow yet? Can you see the glow? Like we painting, we painting so thick. Be brave. If you're really liking this paint, but you're concerned about the expense of doing it consistently, I know when paint pouring came out, that was a big worry for people. How can I keep this to be sustainable? Because it's so much fun. And I'm going to say that the best thing to do for that would be like the abstract paint. <laughs> Because it's very economical, but the body on it's very good. So if you're like, I have to do this every day of my life, that would be a way to do that. Sustainability is important. Right? I'm doing something similar. I'm painting with the Artist Loft Level 3. It's very sustainable. You can uh, get it in Michael. If you don't have Michael, get the Astra. You've got choices. You have them. You have the power, you have the touch. <laughs> That's been in my head all day, by the way. Yeah? Yes. The, the, the thing about the Transformer song? Yes, all day. And That's you know, I say when a song gets stuck in your head, it's like trying to tell you something, and I'm really trying to understand what the Transformers theme song is trying to tell me. <laughs> now, now keep in mind, that's the one from the 80s. Yes. Or early 90s. Yeah. 
that the first the original movie and it had was there whole, another one well there was oh michael several. bay did a thing he, he did a thi- some, i don't know michael bay did a thing i would say the best thing about what michael bay did was make it fuck me <laughs> that girl was shockingly funny i i don't know they made optimus say my bad and if there's one dude who doesn't say my bad it's optimus i don't know i really liked bumblebee it was good so That's see, fun. we're just putting the the little mix with just the cad red now, right? We're putting these out here. How are we doing? They start to look like little fall leaves having a little fall moment. You can always get the quinacridone and the cad together again and make a lovely mix out here on these outer edges. What are we doing? We're just tapping. Tap, tap, tap. It's your groove thing. There you go. Fun stuff. Now, I gotta come down here and do some stuff, man. What you gotta do? I gotta give some of this red color. Anything that's up top, you kind of want to give it a moment down below. Hmm, that makes sense. Put some ray here on the left hand side, kind of coming out into the right. Right there. Not great. Play. Play, play, play. Rinsing out. What else have we got? Well, we've got some orange. Orange is always great. I'm going to take my yellow and a little bit of my orange mix. I'm going to make an even lighter value. And I'm going to come between my trees. Just a little bit. Put that paint down thick. So there's some green that's still there, right? Mm-hmm. Some of that going. Lots of that on here towards the centers. More into the yellow. And it's okay, it'll get into other colors every once in a while. It changes the painting a little bit every time. Don't worry about it. Kind of a negative space painting, see? Yeah. And that's good. We want that. Pop things out. Now, let's start having some fun up in the trees. I'm going to get my, just my CAD red light here, and I'm going to start taking blobs of paint. Doing what? Dabbing them. Look at that. Yeah. Fun stuff. So it's so thick, you might wonder, how does it still, how does it still stick? This works with a palette knife. This works with a brush. The acrylic paint tends to want to stick to itself. And as long as I'm not pressing too hard, I'm going to have a lot of control over what happens. I'm here. And again, if you get too overexcited, you can always come back with any color that you painted out and put it back. It's returnable. Because mm. right? they're just pops of paint. All 
I love doing this. I'm getting that yellow and orange mix that I had going. Just because there's a lot of it right there. And why not? <laughs> no reason not to. Maybe some comes down there. Trees become lighter. The opening. And those little moments. Also be nice to take some of this orange, especially the bright orange. And if you need to put out some cad red light to get it, rinse out and layer, 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 right? Fire and orange. Your pigment is really bright, isn't it? Yeah. Now, a lot of yellow into our orange. A lot, almost all yellow. Look at us go. Put out more yellow if you need it. Now it's got a little orange in it, but it's still like a lot of yellow. Be afraid of the light values. They're the fun part. How is everybody doing with this? Really good. This is something I think a lot of people are excited to do. A lot of fun. Yeah. Get your messy on. They've got a little chant they've got going. What's the chant? Sure paint. Sure paint? <laughs> sure paint. Would they like me to release a paint? I, do, I, I just think it's funny. I just look over here and there's all these sure paint. Sure, sure paint, paint. Sure paint. All right. I'm with you. I don't know. That's good. Adding just these little pops of color where I can find them. Picking up this just lots of color. Look at those. And they just work together, don't they? Yeah. You just find the balance where you can. You put color where you think it needs it. Those little leaves, they're popping. I'm rinsing out thoroughly. Yeah. And I'm going to get back into my little bit of kind of yellow green, right? Yeah. Okay. Make sure. Everywhere I want that, that's doing well. See, you, you can come back with color. Anywhere you want. You want a dark green under a tree? You just come back with it. it. Maybe it blends into the red, and that's good. Hmm. Colors blending together is a good thing. Because you want that hot mess. Now I'm going to take some of my phthalo uh, turquoise and some of my blue. And come here. Add that to the mix. Those laces, maybe. A little shadow. 
And then I just take a little bit of my turquoise and a lot of my white. I'm going to start to thickly apply paint and fill in the gaps. Look at that. Fun. This is a highlight, right? Yeah. And then it blends itself. How magic is that? And you can see I'm just picking up paint. So all we're doing is picking up the paint. Letting it come out. Where it needs to go. Now, go ahead and make sure you can use up these last bits, right? I'm going to stick dabs. Look at that. Mm -hmm. If you're using a good quality heavy body paint, Whatever you lay down, it's going to stay. If that makes sense. It does. So if you put down a thick pop of anything, it should hold its shape. If you're doing student paint, what will happen is not anything bad. In any way, I'm just putting it out there real thickly. Is that just pleasing me? <laughs> that makes sense. Um, if you're painting with a student paint, all that's going to happen is it's going to do something called leveling. All right, I have to sign it. Yeah. Because I can mess with it all night. I know. And so could you guys. So let's it's put really a easy. signature on it. I guess I'll pick this uh, pure turquoise and my monogram liner. Give this a, a while to dry somewhere safe. Days. Yeah. Because again, the skin will tell you that it's dry, but it's really not. It takes it a minute to cure all the way through. Even with acrylics fast drying times, when you paint thick, it can be a bit of a thing. All right, let's have a thing. How do we do? This How did you guys great. do? So I, I love it. Was it? Yeah. I hope this was a surprise to you as a project. I hope you were like, wow, I didn't even know that was a thing we could do. I like this. This is, I really like it. I like all of them. You know, you know how you guys are always like, what do I do with my leftover paint on the palette? Over here on the palette? Yeah, all that, whole nother painting. <laughs> a little yeah. tiny ATC card, right? You can paint like this. All of these colors are valuable. All of these colors are good. You can keep laying out paint. You can go for it and go for it and go for it and go for it. All right, let me turn it forward. All right. I hope this is an invitation to you to try something new. You know, when you're a beginner, I say take it all in. Don't be judgmental of yourself. You're learning skills. We don't just walk a tightrope the first time we try. That's why you need teachers where you're net. You can enjoy the experiment and never worry about the outcome. If you want to share your painting with a group you know is really friendly, definitely come by the Facebook group and sign in. You can share your very first painting. You're going to get supported. You're going to get treated really well. I cannot wait to see your version of this painting. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.